On that day, Rabbi Akiva expanded, then Moses and Moshe and the children of Israel sang this song to Hashem, and they spoke saying, there is no necessity for the verse. Uh, you want Mishnah Hay. Uh, Mishnah Hay, right? What did I say? Dalit? I said Hay, and I did Dalit. Okay. On that day, Rabbi Shu ben Harkin Israel expanded, Yo, um, served the Holy One. Blessed is he only out of love, as it is stated, uh, Yo, uh, from Yo, even she, he, even should he kill me, yet I yet will I put my trust in him. But still the matter is in doubt. Does the verse mean I will trust in Hashem or I will not trust in him? Learn from what is said. Till I perish, I will not discard any perfect faith. This shows that he acted out of love. Yet Yeshua said, who will remove the dust from your eyes, Rabbi Yochanan ben Zakai? For you expounded all your life that you, you have served the Almighty only out of fear. And as it is said, a man who is wholesome and upright, God-fearing, and who shuns evil, but has not, but has not yet um, Yeshua, I'm sorry, but is not yet Yeshua, your disciple, disciple, shown that he has acted out of love. One who warned his wife and then went into seclusion, even if he heard from her uh, from a passing bird, he must divorce her and pay for her marriage contract. These are the words of Rabbi, Rabbi, Rabbi Eliezer. Rabbi Yeshua says, not until the woman who spin thread by moonlight gossip about her. If a single witness testified, I saw her become defiled, she did not drink, moreover, even a slave or even a female slave are believed to disqualify her for receiving payment for her marriage contract. A mother-in-law, her mother-in-law's daughter, a co-wife, her husband's brother's wife, and her husband's daughter are all believed, not, however, to disqualify her from receiving payment for her marriage contract, but only that she not drink. Okay. Um, <clears throat> Mishnah Gimel. So there's a part, the, the Mashna Gimel points out that there's a that there's a common formula we should have made between the the, the Ede Stira and the Ede uh, Kinoi. Now the Kinoi is uh, he's got to warn her in front of witnesses. Uh, right. It's according to the opinion of Rabbi Yeshua, which is the accepted halacha, that he's got to do the he's got to do the warning in front of two witnesses, and the Stira has to be witnessed by two people in order for her to become a sota. Right. Okay. So now we we should have, uh, but, but there's also the, the, the fact that, that if there's uh, a witness who will answer her for forever, who, who's, who's actually who, who saw who saw her in the act. Okay. Um, so now we we say We should have made a call about the about the, the uh, about this. My edus rishona, the first edus, which is the edus of the kinoi. Right of the warning, she'ena or sarta yisur alam. There's no, there's no difference between before and after the the warning. Right, she's not asher. Uh, the the the, the rishona. Let me just make sure we're talking, I'm talking about the right rishona. Um, Alastira, beg your pardon. My mistake. I thought we were talking about the kinoi, but we're actually talking about the uh, about the stira. Um, that even even the even the stira, the, the, if the witnesses saw that she went into seclusion with the guy that she was warned about, she still is not asa forever because she can drink the sota waters and be permitted back to her husband, mm -hmm. right? So that needs to be done with uh, with two witnesses. But the but the other uh, but but a different type of uh, of um, of edus, which. Which is the edus of, of her actually committing the act, um, is uh, that's going to answer her forever. Again, if you've got if you've got an edus that's not even going to forbid her forever, requiring two, then the edus that's going to forbid her forever to her husband should require two as well. Talmud Lomar the aid ein ba. So we have a pasuk that teaches us, and there is no witness against her. Okay, so it's only she only be, uh, drinks the sort of waters if she has no aid singular, which means if you, she does have an aid singular, then she cannot uh, drink the sort of waters, and therefore she must be divorced without a kasuba. So she needs two, two witnesses. Is... So no, no. So so there's a passage that says the aid and by. So only one witness is enough. Call aid or shiyeshba. Even a single aid, even a even a parcel aid. Is enough to um, is is enough to take her to is enough to to uh, to make her not drink the sort of water and have to um, and and have to be divorced without it. Ah, so so, uh, so the single witness says I saw her become defiled. Yeah. So she did not drink. 
but because this single witness said this and she didn't drink, so she that means she loses the consumer. That means automatically she has to she has to be divorced. And since she's already in the getter of a sota, since uh, since there are two witnesses to steer her, right? So she's already in the in the sota, and she needs to drink the water in order to return herself to her husband. She's already uh, lost to the chazaka of her of her kasuba. Why well, there's uh, there's a reason obviously that between the slave and a female, even a female slave, usually a female slave cannot. Be That's right. About, uh, so this is so this is just enough that the that it's enough that we say well, now that now that we have some kind of edus that she's uh, um, that she is uh, that she's been uh, she's been defiled means that uh, that we can't make her drink the sort of water. It's, it's got to be aid and ba. The Pasuk says explicitly aid and ba. If there is a witness against her, then, uh, then, then it's done. There's no, there's no sota. There's no sota water, at least. Okay. okay, so let's do the kalvachomer in the opposite direction. Now that we know that one witness is enough to assa her forever in this particular case, so then the first one, in other words, the Eid Estira, that should be also so surely it should be that uh, enough that uh, that you have uh, you just have one witness to her going into Estira, because right? that's a, that's a less severe uh, a less severe thing. Okay, Talmud Lomai Kima Taba Erastabar. Okay, so we make a a gezer shava on the word davar. We have a pasuk that says if he, uh, when a when a husband finds in his wife an ervas davar, this is talking about when he has to give her a divorce, right? Okay. And also it, it says al pishnaim edim yakum davar. You need two edim to yakum davar. So the so the connection with davar davar it has a connection between erva ervas davar. And Adim Davar. So when you when you have a, a you, you want to have Adim. So so in the Islam case, when you need to have uh, when you, uh, when, you, when you're trying to establish that that there was um, some sort of erva, uh, then you need to have two witnesses, right? right? Because you need al tishnaim Adim Yakum Davar. So that's the so that's the joining of the dots over here. Malah Halan al tishnaim Adim Afkan al tishnaim Adim. So in so that means that when that whenever the, your stam re, uh, case is that whenever you have any kind of uh, testimony required, you need two witnesses. It's only specifically in this case of the um, of the of the aid ein ba, where it explicitly says one witness. That's when we learn out that there's one witness. So that's an exception to the rule, and you can't learn a kalva from it. Okay. So you have got a situation where the woman, where, the, where you have your ADA stira, you, you've got two witnesses that she secluded herself, and now another witness comes and says, "I saw that she was uh, that she was tummy." But Lord says another says another single witness. There was no there, uh, she or she or she didn't become tummy. Okay, so now you've got one aid against another aid. Um, Ishbu, uh, and and you will see that the edus cancel the, the two edim cancel each other out. Ishal meres nitmes, ishal meres lo nitmes. So even a female witness comes and tells a, a single witness, paisa um, shosa. So we cancel the two the two witnesses who who contradicting each other cancel each other out. It's a kilo they're not there, and we go back to the situation. We got okay, we got two witnesses who saw that she was going to steer us, and now she still has to drink. One witness says she was she became something. Two witnesses says no, no, she didn't. Um, so this is this has got to be talking about a situation where these are not kasher adam, or where they're relatives of each other, or for whatever reason. Okay, so so we still we, the majority is going to is going to trump the minority. But if you have two saying that she did become Tame and one said not, okay, we're talking about obviously there was no, if there, were, if there had been a warning, that's right, then she'd be executed. Um, right. And if they were kosher witnesses. But we're talking again about the, this mission, the mission that we, we say is talking about a case where you have, let's say, two Abadim telling the thing that she was, she became Tame and one, and one Ebed comes and says, no, she didn't become Tame. Okay. Then the two witnesses say, no, she doesn't drink. Mimela, once she can't drink, then the husband has to divorce her and no and 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 no kusuba. Um 
by the way, Kahati makes a, makes a point that uh, that if uh, if there were if there was one kosher witness and two puzzle witnesses, it's Kiilu you got one against one. Uh, okay. So one cash, one kosher is as good as two as two puzzle. Do we have the same thing here like we do in, in Makos? If if um, there are two witnesses and one says, you know, I, I saw her being defiled, the other one says, hey, you weren't there. You were in Tel Aviv. Okay, yes. Absolutely, absolutely. If you have a if you have a case of Adim Zomamim, then right. yeah, that's uh Adim Zomamim should be equally applicable to this situation. Okay. okay. Um, and it might be that what's the pun you know, we might have a discussion like what's the punishment going to be? You're going to say that uh, do they get uh, uh, do they have to pay for the kasuba? So no. that's the kashir zaman. What's the kashir zaman is uh, oh the damages is the is how much she was going to lose from the kasuba. Well, they would do to they would do to to the, to the uh, um, to, excuse me they would do to them what they would do to the what he wanted done to the um, what she wanted done to you know so what they wanted done to the woman correct. Right. I think it'll be it, it actually would be an interesting case because at, at this situation, let's say you had uh, you had Ada uh, um, Ada Tuma who were coming to, to she she was they already had Ada Steer and there was and that was and that was done and and, and they were accepted, and then came Ada and um, Ada Tuma and, uh, and said no I saw she was defiled so he, he wants to make her not drink and lose a kasuba, and then and then so Aiden come and say how could you say that you were with us at the time. Um, so what would happen? With, that's an interesting question because at this point the chazak is that the woman has lost her kasuba, right. and she's only going to be. So he's not making her lose her kasuba really because she's already kind of lost. But what he's doing is he's depriving her of the ability to drink the sorta water to, to clear her name. So it might be that he just gets he gets malchus. No problem. That's, that's kind of your fallback situation if you can't find a monetary damage to give to the person and it wasn't a, it wasn't a capital case because it was he wasn't going to have them sentenced to death but uh but yeah interesting i, I don't know it's, it's also it's also interesting because is it considered a kasha adus is it the halal adus that that you can have a kasha zamam on because it's not a it's not two witnesses normally you need to have two witnesses being made to aid in zamam Sorry, Ian, but that's an interesting question. <laughs> okay. Perk okay. okay, now we kind of segue from um, from the subject of Sota just uh, by, by virtue of the fact that the first subject, uh, the first itemized item on the list of the car is talking about the Sota, but it's going to go off on a complete tangent in this peric, um uh, from from Sota. So we'll just remember that our departure point is the fact that uh, that the uh, the parasha sota can be said in any language. Okay, Elo Neymarim Bechol Lashon. It may be said in any language. Parasha sota. Okay, so uh, the the sota may be said any in any language because he's um, the the coin has got to warn her in a language that she understands. Okay, so then um, he's, because it says Yamar El Haisha, it's got to be said to the woman, meaning that she's got to be able to understand. If she doesn't, if she doesn't speak. Uh, Hebrew, and what's the point of talking to her in Hebrew and giving her all these warnings if she's right. not going to understand what he's talking about? She's got to be able to say, "I'm and I understand and, uh, what you're telling me." Um, okay, so so this may be said in any language. Also, vidoy maser, the the fact that you know hashki ifami on kochachami neshama, you know all that stuff when when you when uh, in the in the fourth and the seventh years when you got to say I've, I've done all what all that I did and. Uh, okay, that's what that should be said in the language that you understand. Kriyashma, even Kriyashma should be said in uh, in a language that you understand. Tvila as well. You're davening to Hashem any language you want. Birkasa Mazon, if you're thanking Hashem for your food, it's no the, the text that we've got is uh, is in Hebrew. But uh, if the person doesn't understand it and they want to bench in English or any other language, they can do that. Edos. Uh, when a person is, uh, is uh, denies knowledge of uh, of, an, of an event, and they want to, and so somebody says, "I want you to come and testify for me um, in court." <laughs> I want you to come and testify for me in court, and the guy says, uh, "I don't know anything." He said, and they say, "I want you to take a shvur." Says, "Yeah, I take a shvur. I know nothing about your case, and I'm not. Uh, I don't want to testify." Um, okay, so that that shavua can be said in any language because again he's he's making testifying about facts and he's and it's got to be in the language that he understands. 
same thing goes for that where somebody comes and says, um, you know, where's my, where, where's my bicycle that I lent you? And he says, uh, you never lent me a bicycle. Or I returned it. He says, no, you didn't. And he wants, to, so he wants him to make a Shavua that he, that he returned the bicycle, that he doesn't have it anymore. So again, because it's something that he has to understand the subject, uh, the Shavua must be, uh, must be taken in a language that he understands. Okay, and uh, we shall carry on uh, in this period in the same vein with the, all the things that, that must be uh, that, that must be said in, in Hebrew. And then we're going to sort of go on the tangent and take a deep dive into these other things that, he, that can be said in, in other languages. Okay. Okay, back to base Gimel. Base Gimel. When he comes to write the scroll, from what, was, what point does he write? From if no man has lain, but if you have strayed well, under the authority of your husband, but he omits, and the Kohen shall adore the woman. And then and then writes, may Hashem make you a curse and an oath. That these curse ca causing waters shall enter your innards to make the belly bloat and the thigh fall away. But he admits, and the woman shall answer, amen, amen. Yob Yossi said he made no break. Rabbi, Rabbi Yehuda says he writes only, may Hashem make you for a curse and an oath. The curse causing waters shall enter your innards, but he admits, and the woman shall answer, amen, amen. He cannot write on a tablet or on a papyrus or on an unprocessed skin, but only on a scroll, as it is stated in a book. And he may not write with gum or vitriol or with any uh, substance that leaves a mark, only with ink, as it is stated, and he shall, it shall, he shall dissolve, a writing that can be dissolved. To what does the, she reply? Amen, amen. Amen to the curse, amen to the oath, amen with regard to this man, amen with regard to another man. A man that I have not committed adultery while betrothed, while married, while awaiting Yubam, or after having been married in Yubam. Uh, I'm, 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 I'm a man that I have not defiled, been defiled, and that if I have been defiled, these curses would come upon me. And mayor, the mayor says, a man that I have not been defiled, a man that I will never become defiled. Um, interesting. So just, just to reiterate the point, this opinion over here about Shomeris Yavam, um, is not the halacha because Shomer is, uh, is is not actually liable to, to the Shvua. Uh, right? This is the who, whose opinion is that? That's Rabbi Akiva. Yeah, is that is that a, is that a Shomer who who, um, who who had an affair uh, while she was a Shomer Siyavam would be asked to the, the Yavam, but the and she must take chalitza not Yavam, but the halacha is not so. Right. Clear on. Okay. Nadarim Yud Base. Wait. All right. Okay. Yud Base. Okay. Yud Base. If the father dies, the sole right does not fall to the husband. If the husband dies, the sole right falls to the father. In this matter, the power of the father surpasses that of the husband. In another matter, the power of the husband surpasses that of the father. For a husband can revoke his wife's Nadarim even after she has been a Bulgaris. Now the father cannot revoke her Nadorum once she becomes a Bulgaris. If she vowed while she was betrothed and was divorced on the same day and betrothed again the same day, even to a hundred men, a father and a current husband revoked the Nadorum. It is the general rule, as long as she had never entered into a state of independence for even one hour, a father and a current husband revoked the Nadorum. It was a custom of scholars that as long as one's daughter had not left him, he would say to her, all the Dharma which you have made in my house are revoked, and so too the husband, before she would come unto his authority, would say to her, all the dharma which you have made prior to coming under my authority are revoked. But once she comes under his authority, he cannot revoke them. Yeah. Yeah. How so? If he performed mama with one and then mama with another, they require two bill, two bill of divorce and kalitza. Mamar with one and then a bill of divorce to the other. She requires a bill of divorce and Kalitza. Mamar with one and then he cohabitated with the other. They require two bills of divorce and Kalitza. Mamar with one and then he performed Kalitza with the other. The first one requires a bill of divorce. If he gave her a bill of divorce to one and then a bill of divorce to the other, they require Kalitza from him. A bill of divorce to one and then he cohabitated with the other one. She requires a bill of divorce and Kalitza. A bill of divorce to one and then mama with the other, she requires a bill of divorce and Kalitza. A bill of divorce to one and then Kalitza to the other. There is nothing after Kalitza. 
if he performed Kalita and then performed Kalita, or he performed Kalita and then Mamar and gave her a bill of divorce or cohabitated, or if he cohabitated and then cohabitated, if he cohabitated and then performed Mamar or gave her a bill of divorce or performed Kalita, there is nothing as a Kalita. It is the same whether it was one Yavam with two Yavamos and two Yavamim with one Yavama. If he performed Kalita and then performed Mamar or gave a bill of divorce we, or cohabitated, or if he cohabitated and then performed mama and gave a bill of divorce um, or performed Kalita, there's nothing after Kalita, whether it's the beginning or in the middle or at the end. However, in the case of cohabitation, when it is at the beginning, there is nothing after it. But when it is in the middle or the end, there is something a lot after it. Now, when the Kamiya says whether it is cohabitation or Kalita and whether it is at the beginning or in the middle or at the end, there is nothing after it. Okay. Okay, Shabbos. Okay, Aleph, um, Aleph, um, Aleph, Yud, Yud Aleph. <laughs> he may lower the Pesach sacrifice into the oven near at nightfall, and we may ignite with chips the fire of the pyre in the temple fire chamber. But in the country, this may not be done unless there is sufficient time for the fire to take hold of most of them. So Yehuda says with charcoal, it is permitted as long as there's sufficient time for the fire to take hold of any amount. With what may we light the Sabbath light and what may we not, not light? Uh, but may it, right? We may neither, either light either with cedar bass or with uncarded flax or with flow silk or with willow bass, nor with desert fiber, nor with sea moss, nor may we light with pitch, nor with wax, nor with cottonseed oil, nor with oil that must be burnt, nor with fat from a sheep's tail, nor with tallow. Nakam the Mead says we may light with boiled tallow, but the sages say whether boiled or not, we may not light with it. We may not light with oil that must be burnt on Yom Tov. Rabbi Yishmael says we may not light with tar because of honor due the Sabbath, but the sages permit lighting with all the oils, namely with sesame oil, with nut oil, with radish oil, with fish oil, with corn seed oil, or with tar, or with nafata. And Rabbi Tarfin says we may light only with olive oil. Right. Right. Okay. Sometimes on Shabbos, uh, trying to say this through before the before the uh, Shliach Seymour does, it's kind of a test, you know? Yeah. I start right at that Kaddish, so I <laughs> can't wait. Any utensil that is susceptible to becoming Tame with Tomos Midras is considered to have contracted Tomos uh, Midrav and okay. regard, yeah. uh, Midrav in regard to May Katos, whether the utensil is Tame or Tahor, and a person is similar to this. Any utensil that is susceptible to becoming Tameh with Tumas Mace, whether your utensil is Tameh or Taho. Rev. Eliezer says it is not considered to have contracted Tumas Madaf. Rev. Yeshua says it is considered to have contracted Tumas Madaf. And the sages say a utensil which is Tameh is considered to have contracted Tumas Madaf, where a utensil which is not hot, which is Taho, is not considered to have contracted Tumas Madaf. A person who is Taho in regard to um, to, to make katos who touch a madov is tame. A flask of make katos that touch a madov is tame. A person who is tower in regard to make katos who touch food st foodstuffs or drinks with his hand is tame. If he touch them with his foot, he is tahor. If he cause them to move with his hand, Rabbi Yeshua declares him tame, and the sages declare him tahor. A jug of katos ash that touches sherat is tahor. If he placed it on top of it, Rabbi Elia, ow! <laughs> Rebellion. Rebellion. <laughs> no, not Eliyahu. <laughs> uh, Rebellion declares a tar and the sages declare to me, get out of here, come on, little guy. He, if he touched food, stuff, drinks, or holy scriptures, it is tough. Okay, now I got all this stuff on my screen, which I can't see. Okay, get out of here. Uh, look at this. Ow, you're killing me over here. Come on, man. You're killing me. Um, right. there's, there's one more sentence at the end of the mission. Oh, one more. If he placed it on top of them, he wrote it, declares a Tahor, and the sages declare a tummy. A person who is Tahor, and we're done. That was, now we're on Dalit. Okay, Dalit is the next one. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I, was, I was wearing shorts yesterday. My son in law was here. He saw my legs. He said, What is the matter with you? You, you, scr you scratched all over. I said, Because this little guy likes to jump on me. We clipped his nails already. He just loves to jump on my, climb up my legs. It's really, he said, Don't go out like that. People will, you know. <laughs> all right. Yud, yes. Reb Shimon, said Reb Shimon, if you see oil being distributed in the courtyard, you need not inquire what it is, either the, either the remainder of the, uh, the wafer mincha offering of Yushalayim, Yushalayim, or the log oil of a mitzorah. 
If you see oil being poured upon the fires, you need not require inquire what it is. It is either the remainder of the wafer, minka offerings of the Kohanim, or the minka offerings of the anointed Kohanim. So oil cannot be donated. Rich Harvin says one can donate oil. If the blood of a kato splattered on a cloth, it must be washed. Although scripture speaks only about those kato's offerings which are eaten, as it is said, it shall be eaten in a holy place, both the kato's offering which is eaten and the inner kato's offering require washing. As it is said, the law of the kato's, there is one law for all kato's offerings. The blood of a disqualified kato's offering does not require washing, whether it is uh, at a period of validity or it did not have a period of validity. Which blood has had a period of validity? That which was kept overnight, but which was contaminated, or which was contaminated with tumor, or which was taken out of the courtyard, and which blood is not a period of validity, that which was slaughtered with intent for beyond its time or outside its place, or that which is qualified people received or uh, or through its blood. Right. So this is so the, the subject that we're talking about over here as we're carrying on in, in Zbachim, is the fact that there's actually a ritual obligation to uh, with, with specifically with a chattas offering, that if, if the blood gets onto something, you actually have to wash it in the Kurdish area. Because... Uh -huh. Okay, yeah. and uh, the, it'll be the same thing with the um, with the with the, with the kalim that are used to uh, to cook it or uh, or to eat it or anything like that. It's in the temple be... area. In the temple but, area, right? You've got to dispose of it inside the temple area. Okay. Okay. Very That's good it for today. Okay. Thank you. Have a lovely day. You too. Thanks. Bye.